Well guys, it is currently Friday. I just got home and uh, as you've seen in a clip before this one, you've seen a 65 Fastback drive out of my shop parking lot. Well, that 65 Fastback is now going to be mine. So it is currently Friday, tomorrow's Saturday, and me and the wife are gonna fly out to Chicago to buy a Gen 1 Raptor, which that video will come out before this one, so you've already seen that. And uh, this guy, pulled into my parking lot, gave me a call. I didn't have his number saved, but I'll get to that in the next story. And uh, he offered me to sell, to buy his 65 Fastback Mustang and we made a deal. So let me get into that story now so you guys can kind of understand this, but it's pretty crazy. So let's get into it. Well guys, after thinking and talking to my dad, I'm not gonna let this car get away from me. So, thought about it for probably an hour and we're going to get this thing. So we're on our way now to grab this car. And when we get back home, I'll walk around it with you guys. So he's kind of in a hurry today, otherwise I'd do it there, but we're just gonna get it and leave. So when I get back home, we'll go around it. Pulling up. There she is, boys. got me a 65 fastback this thing runs awesome They're really clean and he even gave me a model of the exact car so that's really neat so let's get her home and i'll show you guys everything about it but man this thing's nice so nice Alright guys, before we go around it, I have to tell you the story on how I acquired this car. So as you guys know, if you're watching this, you must be Fastback fans or Mustang fans. And we all know that Fastbacks aren't cheap. And you don't get deals. So to get a deal on this car means a lot to me. And uh, I'll just jump right into the story. So a year or two ago, I needed some uh, vintage plates for my 70 Fastback and 71 Mach 1. So I made a Facebook status reaching out to see if anybody had them. My buddy Jesse Cuervé sent me a Craigslist ad uh, for this guy that's posting older plates in good shape. So I hit him up. He said he had 70 and 71, a set of them. So I went there, I bought them and he asked what they were going on. And I told him I collect Mustangs, showed him some pictures. And I told him that I had a pace car also that I could use a plate for. And he's like, well, let's go out in the garage and smiling ear to ear. And uh, he showed me his coupe and convertible Mustangs that he had. And I smiled and I, I was like, I like them, but I'm a huge fastback guy. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, let's go see if I have a plate for the pace car. And we went to the other garage and under the car cover, he pulled up the cover off. And right when I seen this car, I started checking it out, looking underneath it, checking the inside out before the car cover was even off. I like lost my shit, to be honest. I didn't think there was a car like this in Sioux Falls that was just sitting and I, I've never seen it at a car show or anything. So I kind of went crazy a little bit and I asked him if he knew his worth kind of told him what they've been going for and I told him if he ever sold it let me know and then after I said that he said he was going to give it to his son when he's done with it I was like I respect that 
at this point in time, that was a year or two ago, I never saved his number because I didn't think anything would come about it. So a year or two later, the day before I bought the Blue Raptor, you guys seen the video, I already uploaded that video. The day before we flew out, he stopped at the shop, called me, and that, like I said, I didn't have his number. So I answered it just like I would at the shop, said it was Randy. And he's like, hey, I'm outside. So I walked out there thinking it was a customer, and I seen the fastback, and I smiled, and I was like, you come to rub it in my face, you need some work on it. And he's like, I'm ready to sell it, and I knew you'd be interested. And at that time, I, I didn't even think I was going to buy it. That's why I didn't video anything, otherwise I would have had footage from there, but I honestly didn't think I was going to buy it. I looked at it, and... I told him it was the worst time, told him about the Raptor, I was going to buy and stuff, and uh, he's like, well, I am di he's diagnosed with MS pretty bad, it's getting pretty bad, he's 75, and uh, he said he called his daughter and son, said he wanted to sell the Fastback for bills, and they both agreed that's fine, and uh, he told me he didn't remember what he ate for breakfast or who he talked to before he left the house, but he wanted me to he remembered what my face looked like when he pulled the car cover off this and he wanted me to be the next owner and when he said that it kind of made me feel like i had to buy it even though I, I didn't know the price yet i thought it'd be it i'll just flat out be be honest i i would appraise this car at sixty thousand. it's that nice and uh he told me to throw an offer and i told him that i don't do offers on cars like these i just say yes or no to what they want and uh He's like, I'm gonna be honest, I want you to own this car. Like, I'm willing to take a hit on it. So he gave me the price and it was really reasonable. And when I called my dad, he said I was an idiot if I didn't buy it. So talked to the wife, thinking she would say, hell no, we're going to buy a pickup the next day. And she's like, well, whatever, make it work if you want, sell some stuff. So kind of figured it out. The night we flew, the night before we flew out to the Raptor, right after work, I went and gave him five grand down to hold the car, even though he said I didn't need to do that. I just wanted to do it out of respect. So he flew to his house after work, gave him money down, showed the wife the car and stuff. I'll upload, upload some pics here. And uh, so she's seen it. We drove around the block and then we agreed to the price. And then a week later, I bought the car. So we have the car now. And, you guys seen the footage so now we can go around it now that you guys know the story but i just thought it was cool that if i never would have went for license plates for my other cars i would have never found this car and we all know nowadays with the internet any car that's rare or desired people want top tier dollar for it because they research them non-stop which is fine if it's your car and you want top dollar, that's completely fine. I'm not knocking it, but you don't get deals like this on cars like this unless they, he did what he did. Like he chose me. It was never listed. He came to me before anybody else. And that's how you get deals is they come to you and you have to be ready to take them. So I thought that was neat and I took advantage and now we have a 65 Fastback in the collection. So it's pretty cool. And, uh, let's go around it. Hello guys, we made it home with the beautiful Fastback. So I'm gonna flip the camera and walk around with you guys. Look at this baby. Don't mind the oil on the ground, it's not from this. She is minty fresh. Can't believe that this is mine. <laughs> Been wanting a fast track for a long, long time. Show you the insides, beast. Door panels, nice. There's the what you see when you're driving. What's really cool is the fog light switch for the grill. It's like a flip switch. And the wipers, I think you pull them out, no? turn them headlights pull out obviously the uh, dimmer switch this one has a fancy clock 
and then the tack it does have the gauges which is pretty cool it's like a higher end package and then uh day i think you flip it i haven't used this yet i don't want to break it but it says night on the other side nice visors both work and both are tight and then we got the back seat which this is a two plus two model so i haven't folded down right now i'll show you the trap door once we get in the trunk but all you do is fold these up like this like that pretty nice seat and then you got like i haven't tried to oh, there we go vents let's see if they work out here I guess you don't see anything, but there's like vents in there. I have a Bluetooth speaker because I took some ugly speakers out of here that were in here. I got to hook the radio up to some speakers. I don't know where I'm going to mount them yet. I had a fire extinguisher in here, which if you have an old car is a good idea. Nice headliner. And then the horn doesn't, I don't know if it's hooked up. I think this is how you honk it, but nothing works. So I gotta look into that, but fairly clean interior. So show you the trunk next. Check the trunk out for you. There it is, spare. That's the trap door that I was talking about. I think you just plug that and lift it up. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. So this is how I just received it. We're gonna do stuff to under the hood. I'm gonna put black valve covers and air cleaner on it, clean up the intake, or get a new one. I think I'm gonna paint the block and the water pump black and just murder it out under the hood. So I'm pretty sure it's our original motor, but we're gonna find out here in another episode when we dig into it more. But it runs good, has headers on it, long tubes. And uh, four barrel, this is a two barrel car factory. But it's been converted, obviously, like most of these. So, there it is, guys. Beautiful. I got to show you guys these are the speakers that were in it. That's now you can see why I took them right out. But uh, he also gave me the original hubcaps that the car had on it originally. Those probably never go back on, but at least I have them. And then he had these grills hanging on the wall, which are factory 65. So he gave me one of those two to hang on the wall at the shop. So pretty nice of him. But anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of the car and uh, my addiction to buying Mustangs. So thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Laddie, say that again about the fastback. I thought you were going to give it to your dad, Daryl. <laughs>